What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to Jockstrap Sports Hockey Talk with Nick. Joined today with Nick. Obviously, it wouldn't be Hockey Talk with Nick without him. Nick, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, brother. How you doing? Doing well. Are you excited for uh, all these? Uh, the, what are the best two words in uh, in all of sports? Game seven, and we are blessed with three of them in the first round, and it's so exciting that we're able to see that. Yeah, that was pretty intense. You know, like I like I've shared before, I haven't followed hockey a whole lot um, on a yearly basis, but this year, you know, I've been trying to pay a little more attention, um, at least tuning into some of the game. Um, and this year, like you said, it was exciting. Game seven all, all over the place. I know, and it was only in the first round. This is what I absolutely love about this sport. It's so great. You never know who's going to win, who's going to lose. If you're first place or last place, like I've been saying this whole time, it's just so great. And especially just game seven, win or go home, do or die. I, I, this, is, this is what I live for. This is what I breathe for. And just the storylines, like I've been saying, has just been absolutely phenomenal. I can't wait to talk about it. Well, yeah, let's dive right in, man. All right. Well, as you know, we have three Game 7s at the end of the first round, and it's been absolutely phenomenal. It's feel like it's been hit or miss. There's been two games or a few games that uh, the series have swept, and then the rest have gone to Game 7s, and they're absolutely phenomenal. First, we'll talk about uh, the Boston Bruins versus the Toronto Maple Leafs. Unbelievable series. Obviously, I think everybody could have said that, you know, they were going to go to seven games, obviously, just because both teams are just so good. Um, but... Uh, for history's past, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs have not been able to do it. We were eliminated them last year, and of course, we had that unbelievable game in 2013 where we beat them in overtime, coming from behind once again. Uh, Boston obviously out came with the wind, advancing to the next round, so they left a lot of questions for Toronto, but that game was just unreal. We just knew it was do or die, and both teams gave out 110% effort. It was just, it was, it was unbelievable, and I absolutely love it. But the thing is, we got two other more Game 7s that we also have to talk about. More importantly, with Carolina and the Washington Capitals going to Game 7, and then, of course, the most intense series that I was telling you about to watch out for was the San Jose Sharks and the Las Vegas Knights. Yeah, that one I caught, you know, I, I tuned in probably second period. It was when Vegas was up on them, and man, oh man, what a game was insane i'm telling you adam right now that's probably one of the best playoff game seven game seven games that you're probably going to see in a long time and had everything it had to it it was just unbelievable a team that you thought that was going to win it another team coming from behind going into double overtime sudden death it was unbelievable now when we get into this so as if people knew that uh, las vegas golden knights had a commanding series lead and the next thing you know, the San Jose Sharks just decided to wake up at the right time at the right place. And next thing you know, there was a Game 7. And it was totally unbelievable. And it just had all the drama that you can ask for in a playoff scenario, regardless if it's hockey or anything else. It had everything that you wanted, and it was absolutely unbelievable. Now, while I say that, uh, I'm sure everybody's bracket is already totally screwed because of the first round. And the NHL is trying to commit like another bracket challenge because everybody's bracket is completely screwed. But that's not, uh, you know, San Jose or Las Vegas' fault. That's a couple other wild card teams, um, you know, winning their series. But we're going to go back to San Jose, Las Vegas. As you saw, you know, Las Vegas was up three nothing in the third period. You thought the cat was in the bag, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. So I, I have a feeling that uh, <laughs> a few Las Vegas fans might be upset with me. So. If uh, any of our fans that weren't watching the game, as you know, Las Vegas was winning 3 nothing into going into the third period of Game 7. It seemed like the cat was in the bag. But then there was a major, uh, a major penalty that happened to uh, Pavelski to where it looked like an awkward play, but the thing is, uh, he got injured really bad. He ended up landing on his head from a cross check, and uh, he started bleeding from his helmet. Now, when I first saw this, I honestly thought it was Photoshop. Then I was like, I've never in my career, I've never seen anybody bleed through through his helmet. And Pavelski definitely was. Obviously, thank goodness he's okay. He's day-to-day for right now. I don't think he's going to be playing 
much in the next round in the next series just because, you know, that's a serious injury. And, you know, with the NFL and the NHL talking, um, uh, what's the word where they talk about the injury reports and stuff like that? You know, sometimes uh, they kind of just, like, scratch it off. Hopefully they'll look more deeply into that and make sure that it's okay. Um, but anyways, that was the change of the game. And after that, you know, it all went downhill for the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Now, is this play, is this the one that the NHL's come out and kind of apologized about the call? Um, so there's been a few, but the thing is, it's always very touchy in this time of the year, more for the fact that, you know, it's do or die for everyone's teams. There's plenty, I mean, we had that drama with the Boston Bruins and the Toronto Maple Leafs with Kadari getting suspended for the entire first round and Jake DeBrus not getting anything. And then uh, it went further on with the series with San Jose and Las Vegas when Joe Thornton um, hit somebody in the head with his stick. I want to say in game three, and he got suspended in the game, and there was only one game. And so, you know, each team is calling out for, you know, multiple different things. We're all sensitive about it. But the thing is, you know, it, it, it's part of the game. Um, there's always going to be awkward, you know, situations and scenarios to where people get hurt and people get injured. Now, with that being said, uh, for people that don't know the hockey rules, so if you get a high sticking to the face, um, a high sticking... Um, we'll usually go with two minutes, just a normal two-minute penalty. However, if the player starts to bleed, it becomes a double minor, which becomes a four-minute penalty. And uh, not a lot of people know about that. But uh, the way that Pavelski got hit, it was with a cross-check, and he didn't get hit in the head. He just got cross-checked to the chest, and he happened to run into another Las Vegas player where he ran into him, and that's where Pavelski fall, fell and hit his head. And he started bleeding from his helmet. It was definitely a totally scary scheme. Again, I'm so happy that's okay. But then, uh, you know, they ended up getting a, a five-minute major. I believe that player got ejected. And, you know, Pavelski went to the locker room as well because he was injured. And after that, that's when that total Game 7 totally flipped to San Jose's side. Man. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a shame to see an injury in any sport. But, man, oh, man, in hockey, does does it seem even more brutal than, than any other? Oh, yeah, it's definitely intense. I mean, uh, for a lot of people that don't know, um, Joe Pavelski is the captain of the San Jose Sharks, and he was already wearing a cage from a previous injury. So the fact that he got injured again is very upsetting. Um, Jeez. But continuing with that, um, if you guys weren't watching the game, obviously they won on a five-minute penalty, and the next thing you know, San Jose ties it up to go into overtime. And then, of course, as we all know, it went through a double overtime to eventually where the San Jose Sharks became the winners, eliminating the Las Vegas Golden Knights and making San Jose go to the next round. You know, for my cousin out there listening, Joey, I'm sorry your team lost, but man, what a way to lose. Oh, man, I, I, that, was, that was totally brutal. I mean, you know, they had fans standing out to, outside the stadium at T-Mobile Burrito in Las Vegas, and people were going nuts because they had a 3 nothing lead with 10 minutes left in the third period. And, you know, this is what playoff hockey is all about. It's all about who has uh, more grit, more determination. And, you know, uh, I don't want to say the word lucky because the word lucky, that's not what happened because Pavelski got injured and they happened to go on the power play. That's not it. But the thing is, you know, uh, with this game in the playoffs, you know, you can have the momentum for 99% of the game, and, you know, by the flip of the switch, it can go the total opposite way. Sorry, I was taking a drink there. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, obviously that that one was evident. Um, so what are you going to – are you going to recap a couple more of the series for us and then kind of jump into round two, kind of give us your feelings on the matches matchups? Oh, of course. Um, so we already talked about the Game 7 between Boston and Toronto. We already talked about Game 7 between um, the San Jose Sharks and Las Vegas. But I need to talk about one more Game 7, and that's between the defending champions, the Washington Capitals, versus the hashtag take warning Carolina Hurricanes. And I need to talk to you about my boy, Justin Williams, a.k.a. Mr. Game 7. Now, if you haven't heard of this man, you need to. And if you're ever in the playoffs... It's always nice to have somebody named Justin Williams on your team. Okay. So Justin Williams, I'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye out. Justin Williams is an absolute legend. He's a certified beautician. He's been in the league for quite a while, but you know what? For some reason, he keeps catches himself uh, in the playoffs. Uh, 
Um, his, just like I said, his nickname is Mr. Game 7. Now, for those of you who don't know, he's been on several different teams and several Game 7s. For your stat guys out there, Justin Williams is 7-1 and one in Game 7 scenarios in the playoffs. He has 14 points. He does work. Um, which is really unfortunate for Capitals fans because for all you that don't know, Justin Williams actually played for the Washington Capitals um, for them last year, you know. And now, you know, they traded him the offseason and Justin Williams became the captain of the Carolina Hurricanes and he's the one that put the dagger in for the Washington Capitals for the for them to be eliminated. So, you know, he's obviously playing with some passion. Oh, he's, uh, There's a little bit of extra motivation behind those skates. Oh, absolutely. I'll tell you what, if, if if Justin Williams keeps on playing, I'll tell you what, I'd, I'd take him on my team any day of the week. And he's just an unbelievable player. He, he's a leader. Um, it's just unbelievable when he just seems to step up every game seven. It's just absolutely unbelievable. Sounds like it. So uh, before, before we go into uh, the second round, I just want to tell you uh, a few more statistics about how crazy – the Stanley Cup playoffs that we're actually in right now. Let's uh, do it. First, for the first time, each um, first place team that finished in the division, which if you guys don't know, is the Metro, Atlantic, Pacific, and Central, uh, which that's considering Tampa Bay, Washington, Pittsburgh, um, Calgary, and Nashville. All four first place teams got eliminated in the first round. That has never happened before. All the wild card teams won. This is the first time that has ever happened. More importantly, this is the first time Alexander Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby from the Eastern Conference have not made, made it past the first round. Wow. So this is totally cool. There's new teams out there. Columbus has never won a Stanley Cup. Um, you know, it, it's so great to see new teams. I know at, this is, I, you don't want to see repetitive teams over and over. It's great for the sport. It's great to see new uh, franchise teams in the playoffs. It's great for the sport. I love it. It's so much action. So action-packed. I absolutely love it. I can't wait for the second round. Yeah, I noticed you had a a few other statistics kind of on uh, how long it's been since some of these teams have been uh, you know, into the Stanley Cup. um, Have won it. And uh, yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely Right, so um, uh, so we obviously went from 16 teams to eight. Um, the last time Boston has won a Stanley Cup was 2011. Carolina in 2006 with their head coach. Um, now uh, the Islanders have been last time from uh, 1983. Uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets have never won the Stanley Cup. The San Jose Sharks have been been to the playoffs multiple times. Never won a Stanley Cup. They've made it to the Eastern, or sorry, the Western Conference Finals once, and that was 2015, 2016. That was the last time they made it that far. Um, and then again with St. Louis. You know, St. Louis has been there for a really, really long time. Um, shoot, I want to say when they moved there, I want to say it was in the 60s or 70s. So, but they've only made the Stanley Cup final three times, and the last time the St. Louis Blues made the, uh, the Stanley Cup final was back in 1970. Wow, that's been a long, long time. Yeah, so they've been uh, they've been dying for it, and you know they've just each each and every time you know again they've made it to the Western Conference Finals, they've made it to the quarterfinals, and so on and so forth. But for some reason, they just cannot get it over that hump. I guess might as well just go right into the second round with St. Louis, and St. Louis is going to have to face a really heavy team with uh, the Dallas Stars. Now, kind of, how do you how do you, how do you feel about this matchup, and who do you think is going to take it? Oh, man, it is it is so tough. Like, <laughs> I will say that everything I've said on this packet uh, on this podcast, saying who's going to win and who's going to lose, I've been completely wrong the whole time. So, if you're a betting man, just go against, <laughs> I guess, what I say. <laughs> 